Yo. What up, what up? This is uh, Rob DAK, one RDC1, also known as Simon Phoenix. Um, I'm a uh, photographer slash video editor slash DJ selector slash wee baby graphic designer. Um, yeah, man, this is me. Um, I just like to kind of share myself creatively, express myself, talk about some of the things I'm interested in, and hopefully some people will kind of resonate and gravitate toward that. Um, yeah. Um, what else you want to know? Cool. And then uh, start about like, what Dallas means to you and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And, and how do you think the, the city of Dallas is progressing towards you know towards um, you know creatively and and socially? You know, you can touch on social if you want, but yeah. creatively, creatively first. Yeah. yeah. So Dallas to me is a place uh, specifically for for growth. Um, it's an opportunity for a lot of people to be able to um, create and cultivate a culture that. Um, that really could use their their input and guidance and energy. Um, for me, I feel like the the biggest thing that it needs is a little bit more unity. I feel like if there was more unity in uh, the creation of what uh, what we like to see here, once we collectively understand what that is, I feel like we'll be in a lot better shape. But right now, I'm just trying to hone my skills and. So that way on the day that I am called upon that I can actually actively contribute. Um, but yeah, I mean, just culturally, I think more than anything that Dallas is extremely talented. There's a wealth of resources. There's a wealth of um, talented individuals. Um, and I think they're all sort of coming into their own at this time. Um, hopefully they won't all leave. You know, hopefully someone will stay and kind of help to cultivate. Or if they do leave, hopefully they'll come back and bring back some of the things they've learned to um, help people see some things that could be done here that aren't being done already. Um, socially, Dallas is, you know, it's, it's a cool place. It's real, it's real kind of chill. It's mostly suburban, so it's a great place to raise kids at and everything. But um, with that respect, um, I think also that's something that's not represented in the... Uh, the creative avenues here so I think a lot of people like to focus on like kind of like urbanism and um, that kind of like urban lifestyle when it comes to like creative so they all flock toward the city um, so you get a lot of people trying to replicate what they see other people doing in other metroplexes like in say like a New York or LA or a Detroit or um, Chicago um, but you know that doesn't really I don't feel like it accurately depicts Dallas yeah you have a little bit of you know urban development kind of happening so you have a lot of people kind of gravitating toward that but the majority of Dallas you know is, is in you know the suburbs it's in these uh, the communities where people have lived for years or where they're developing and I wish a lot of times the creativity here would also kind of reflect that and I think once Dallas comes to actually embrace who Dallas actually is I think that's when things will really truly start to flourish here um, one of the things I always like to bring up is that you know whenever you're innovating and you're being true to yourself uh, the things will come as as natural but as soon as you try to imitate or try to be something that is not of you that's when you start meeting a lot of resistance and it doesn't actually ring true and resonate with the people that it should and I feel like for any type of culture or city to kind of grow you need the support of the people that are around you and closest to you so that way other people can see hey this is something I may want to be a part of how can I be a part of and contribute and so on and so forth so that's my little spiel about Dallas um, I hope that other people um, are able to add their creative input and we can all see this place grow and flourish in the way that I know that it can.
Thank you. 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 All right, hi, my name is Sam Lau. We are here at Center, which is my day job that I use to pay the bills. In my nightlife, I'm a superhero, no, I'm just kidding. I am a rapper, singer, artist, you know, just general creator. Yeah. Cool. All right, cool. So what is it, what is it exactly that you that you project through your art, whether it's music or you know just expressing yourself? Mm -hmm. um, I like to portray like a sense of strength, and one of the things I pride myself on is being unapologetic, even if I myself might doubt something that I'm doing or doubt you know have those insecurities. I don't want that to come across in my work. Like I want it to be a strong, like sense of whatever it is that I'm saying or trying to portray in that moment and I think that's really important to you know just be strong and unapologetic with what you're doing otherwise no one's going to believe it and then for Dallas how do you feel um, how do you feel Dallas inspires you and at the same time what what it is um, like how, how do you see yourself benefiting from the city of Dallas and how, how does it influence you? Um, people outside of Dallas don't realize it, but Dallas actually is a very creative, artistic city. Like there's a very healthy art community here. There's a very healthy music co community here. Um, and in some ways, because most people don't realize it, it's here it makes the artists work even harder like we're not a New York or an LA where you can just you know run up on somebody at a party or you know a new business associate and be like hey yeah I do this this and this and I'm awesome and you know I'm an artist like everybody else um, this, is me. this is real life right now <laughs> hey thanks for calling center how can I help you but like I was saying, like the the community here is really strong, but because people outside of the community don't know that it's necessarily there, it makes the artists go even harder. And it kind of gives us a safe zone to create because we're not under that much scru scrutiny. Like we have a chance to like really fine tune and really think about what we're doing and like put out the best possible products that we possibly can because, you know, no one's looking over our shoulder constantly, but then they'll be really surprised when they find something, you know, as amazing as what we're doing has come out of Dallas. And I think that really works in our favor, as even as much as it is a hindrance, like that in and of itself works in our favor a lot. Yeah. Okay, what does creative prosperity mean to you? Or what do you think of when you hear creative prosperity? Creative prosperity. So I would think that would just mean like an abundance of, you know, creative ideas and the ability to follow through with them. Because having creative ideas is one thing and like having, you know, a notebook full of like, oh yeah, I could do this and this and this and that would be a cool idea is one thing. But actually executing those is a completely different like realm. So I think creative prosperity is, you know the ability to not only have those ideas, but to see them to through to the end, like see through their fruition.
like if you hit them with a good presentation, yeah. you'll even get people that aren't even really interested in the product. Right. But it's just like, wow, this is awesome. Right, yeah, just and the way they buy it. it. Yeah. And low key, they might not even watch it. Right. <laughs> You, they, they bought it. They might just keep it, you know, as, it up. Just as like, like, I like uh, the yeah. cover, I like what it looks like. like and, you know, yeah, so. I've done that with like shoe boxes, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like with shoe collabs and stuff, like, it's, it's like, I'll, I'll keep the shoe box. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, I mean, it's like, you know, like, once you have shoes. Hey, so I'm at Epica right now, chopping it up with Brandon. I don't know how I'm looking, I'm trying to look into the camera. <laughs> yeah, but, um, so we're, so we're sitting here talking about packaging, right? And presentation is everything. Brandon, what were you just telling us? What were you just telling us right here? I was, I was basically emphasizing the fact that, you know, uh, you can't, you, you, when you're doing the, the, uh, the, the creative and like you're developing a product, you're developing a certain concept, like you got to consider every single thing from inception of the idea all the way to the presentation of your product right. because low key, there's situations where people will buy it just because of the packaging, bro. Like, just because they like it, they like the hype around it, you know, they might not even be into a certain brand or a certain product, but just because of the way it was presented to them and brought to them, they're gonna pick it up, so. Right. Just always keep that in mind. I mean, out of the three years that I've been here at the shop now, that's one thing that I've learned. Word. So. Presentation. Presentation is everything. Wait, let me. You know, <laughs> presentation is everything. Presentation is everything. Cause everything. Every wait, 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 uh, wait. There we go. Everything. <laughs> yeah, man. Presentation is definitely everything. It's very important because you, you just need that extra spice sometimes. To it, it's just one thing to release something, but once you put like the extra touch on it, the extra flavor, it's like it's just a whole different perspective that people have on it. So. With that being said, yeah. Oh, yeah, people in the shop. What's up, guys? How are you? Hey, uh, hey. Hey. Um, because, dude, retail, yeah, it's all psychology, dude. <laughs> all psychology. Dude. All like, psychology. When you walk into the store, bro, yeah, like it's basically set up in a in a certain like when you go to IKEA. Yeah. It looks like a bunch of mates, but they have it set up to where it's like they want you to go a certain the bedroom, way yeah. through the whole path, and it's yeah. like it's it's strategically placed that way. So it's like you know when like I set up the store and like the different uh, little you know sections and stuff. It's yeah. like you got to consider that. Like you walk into the store, I'm, I'm a new customer. Where am I going? First attention that you want is your key focal point product right up front. So like right now I got the Adidas that I just right. got. And then, you know, you want to kind of give them like the path of like which way to go through the store. Because I mean, you usually have on average That's maybe sick. 10, 12 minutes having a customer inside of the store. Uh, we made it. Y'all made it? Yeah, it's a clear uh, grip tape that you just put sublimate on it. Oh yeah, that's dope. And y'all make them like that all the time, or? Uh, that's the first one, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just found that grip tape. But so we could do customs. Customs? Like, even in, during the holidays, you go into the store, it smells like fucking Christmas in there. <laughs> uh, Firewood. It's all cozy and shit. It smells like cinnamon and fucking chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Blockly bit bookies. No, yeah. <laughs> Blockly bit bookies. Uh, but bro, they do that shit on purpose, bro, because it's like from childhood hey, up to now. Yeah, man. Take care, y'all. From childhood to now, like, we've been programmed by those stores to once we once we see that once we smell that it activates us uh the urge like the to buy you know yeah. um, what is it called like a call to action and you got to consider all that shit not only as a consumer but also as somebody making products for the consumer so you know like if they're putting everything uh attention into everything from the lighting that's in the store to the way the store smells to the yeah. packaging and the presentation of the fucking product then we need to do that as well right you need to everything in the smell right mm -hmm. for the smell smell that's all it's about folks 
making sure your packaging is right. And presentation is everything. Everything. Um, cool. All right, Brandon. So just recently you did what the State Fair was, what, September? October. October. Or, State no, Fair. yeah, you're right, September. September, right? No, October. October? Because the State Fair Classic, I always go for Grambling. Oh, then it may be his October. Ah, uh, let me see, let me look. All right, he's gonna look it up real quick. But anyway, so uh, I don't know why I always go for Grambling though. Not from Louisiana, but I don't know, I just, I'm just such a op. I always go for the opposite. Like I don't know why. They're the opposing Se size. September 30th through October the 23rd. Okay, okay. So about a month more. Over the fall. Sorry, the start of the fall. So, um, so talk about the release you did, man. Like, how, like, how did you come about doing, making that release with the big tech shirt? Um, I kind of uh, me and my me and Miguel Ibarra, the guy that kind of put the well, did, did put the whole art together. We were just, you know talking just shooting the shit and we were talking about making a uh, a t-shirt that um was emphasizing new dallas like okay know, the new dallas right like, uh, representation of that and you know because what dallas you know a lot of people say when they talk about big cities that the reason dallas hasn't grown into like what la and new york is is because dallas lacks culture huh. i think that's false we actually, I beg to differ. Yeah, we have a lot of culture. Unfortunately, though, a lot of culture. Unfortunately, though, it's a lot of really racial, racist hat history that creates mm. Dallas's culture. Um, you know, that's unfortunate. Um, Dallas tries really hard to kind of like just sweep that under the carpet because you know, as as colored people, be it black or Latino whatever you want to call it, they, they'd rather us just forget about all that shit. Right. Like it didn't happen. Like, okay. And it did. It did. It did. And we are still suffering from the repercussions of it. Mm. You know? um, and uh, so you look at the media and stuff and you look at the, 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 the textbooks and stuff that in, high, in school that they're showing you and stuff. Like, you know, you go to school and they're teaching you that Christopher Columbus is a, is a hero. Like, he came in here and he, like, blessed the Indians and... Bro, that's not true, man. He was a cold-blooded murderer. He, you know, a bunch of fucked up shit happened. Um, so, you know, the state fair, a lot of people go and, you know, I'm one of them. Mm. Uh, I go in there at least twice a year. Right. And I spend, what, at least a hundred bucks every time you go in there. You gotta buy the corn dog. You gotta buy right. the ticket. All the tickets for the rides. and All the know. rides. You're a father you know, now, you know. It's like you got dollar yeah. beers and shit. So it's like yeah. you go in there and you're spending racks. Bro. Right. So you got to think about where, who am I giving this money to? So with the state fair shirt, it was kind of like a way to use streetwear and kind of pop culture okay. to educate at the same time. So dope, dope. The shirt was like a post-apocalyptic view of of big techs so the storyline be, uh, behind it all was like you know this this young kid in uh 2067 is uh cruising through you know he's like a cowboy like a new school like future cowboy yeah post-apocalyptic and he's uh you know pulls up and he sees this head on the floor and it's big Tex's head and it's just all like abandoned he doesn't yeah and nice thing about it is that so this, he doesn't even know what the fuck it is he doesn't know who big Tex was what it represented what it meant nothing he's just tripping out like yo what is this big head doing here <laughs> and uh you know it's a post-apocalyptic world but it's still kind of hip-hop uh uh influence so he pulls out his can of, of spray paint and he graffitis epic on it right and then he goes along he goes along his way so it's just basically showing Big Tex as an ancient relic, saying that everything that that represented no longer exists. It doesn't even affect Dumb. the new culture, the new people that inhibit this this part of the globe. Just just like a new wave of a like wave, yeah, a new wave of like inhabitants that don't that see beyond what what Big Tex was yeah. maybe really intended to you know represent. Yeah. Because, Definitely. Uh, it wasn't until 1967 that people of color could go into the state fair. 
right. my mom was born in 67. That's not even a lifetime away. So facts. Never forget. Never forget. Hashtag never forget. Hey. <laughs> cool. This is the last question. What does creative prosperity mean to you? Creative prosperity. Man. Creative prosperity, I guess to me, would mean having a uh, having a strong support system that's go going to uh, that's going to help you, um, you know, um, manifest these creative ideas that you have. Because, you know, let's be honest, like, look at Kanye right now. He's going crazy, bro. You know, uh, being artistic and being creative, you're always uh, right on that thin line between creativity and insanity. So, uh, you know, you always have to have that good support system to keep you sane, to, uh, to help you tell those little voices in your head that you ain't full of shit that you know what you're doing is something that's a good idea and that is going to help and you know the community or it's going to help you make money or you know something but you know that's what i would probably say creative prosperity meant creative prosperity <laughs> all right so in the background you've probably seen carlo Say what's up, man. What's up, guys? How's everything going? Doing great, man. Doing great. And and you recently just shot a concert. Let's hear about it, man. And you made a cover of the live recording album. Let's hear about it. Well, the cover goes to Alice and V. Smith, but I was uh, lucky enough to to shoot a uh, part of the promos that are inside the, okay. the album. Yeah, let's let's see it, man. Yeah. This is Alice Cooper, right nice. here. Nice, nice. Y'all need to check out this guy. It's okay. like. Straight up super 70s and 80s yeah. rock star. Uh, this is the guy, the, the guy that when when you were a kid, if you were my age, like when you were a kid, yeah. you bring a record of this guy home and your mom will be pissed. Ah, so okay, the, one of those. It's that bands. kind of guy. Yeah, 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 okay. And he actually autographed it too. Yeah, he did. That nice. Was that was nice. Dope. Okay, where was the show at? Uh, this was at Good Records last good year. Records. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, think of it like the, the guy played for like 200 people. Okay. Inside, inside the store. And this was here in Dallas. Yes. Nice. Totally okay. here in Dallas. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so talk about some of the some of the other things you shoot in Dallas. Like, how do you? How does the city? How how does the city receive you as far as being you know, a, a, um, you know, an established photographer? Ah, cool. Uh, I mean, I so far the city has has warmed up to me uh, within this past I said like three years. Yeah. I shoot a lot of like live music and culture uh, okay. around in the city. So uh, that's that's interesting. Um, yeah. It's like ever evolving, you know. Like um, one year was rock, now it's hip hop. Like you know, it it, it kind of like changes as, as culture does, especially here in this town. So yeah, that's that's what's up, man. So um, so what is it that you like to project through your art? Like what is it that you want people to to, to take away from your take photographs? Away. Tell us what is it exactly that you want people to uh, get from your photographs? Like like. Uh, like what's the like is there a message that you that you like to capture well tell us about your photographs and your style of photography let's start there <laughs> pretty much it's like uh, my approach is like like street photography like yeah. really really casual uh i try not to think too much about uh, the photograph when i'm when i'm out out there it's pretty right. much like spur of the moment what, what's right. happening I, I try to to have that flavor within that that line uh, of my of my, my my photos yeah so uh, I don't know some sometimes it's it's, it's a joke sometimes it's an, an internal joke that comes through the, the picture uh, sometimes it's just uh, a random moment um, I like to I like to catch like like moments right. like really really important let's say like the height of a performance like uh, a performer jumping a performer like like hitting the floor, super sweaty, dripping in sweat on yeah. the on the stage, like moments like that 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 kind of like highlight a great performance. That's what I'm all about. Nice. And and you recently just shot Saint Pablo. How was that, man? The, the after show. Uh, the yeah, the after party. The for, after party, man. How yeah. was that? How was that? It was pretty interesting. Like a lot of people were, were like hoping Kanye showed up, but that 
obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was pretty interesting. Good vibes. A lot of people came through, and uh, it was a, a cool snippet of, of of Dallas culture. You know, that's okay. for sure. You get to see a lot of like, you know, trends and and, and fashions and, and just like the way people people gear towards a party. You know, yeah. I feel like Dallas like party scene is kind of like really really opening up and. Uh, for a guy coming in with a camera and trying to barge the party, they seem like they don't care. So that's pretty interesting. Nice, nice. It's kind of like 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 you uh, like you become invisible yeah. after let's say after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> right, I definitely feel that. And I definitely, you know, hold the cameras is just a journey. But man, did you get a chance to go to the St. Pablo show or? I didn't. I oh, wanted okay. I wanted to shoot it, but I, I was yeah. not I was not lucky. Ah, twice. okay. They didn't I wasn't select you. I was unlucky twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. What can you do? Cool. All right, man. Last question. Go ahead. What What does What does creative prosperity mean to you? Like, what comes to mind when you hear creative prosperity? I mean, creative prosperity would mean like, like you being, hmm, if you break it down, like creative, like you being creative, you doing all all that you want within within your mind, your talent, and and and. And, and the things that you put through, um, you have that on the creative side. Prosperity will be like, like a becoming a fruitful and, and becoming a, again prosper and, and being able to take care of yourself as a, as well for others. So, in order to to be creative, prosperity will be like to to be able to to have some certain success that is uh, with withstanding. Uh, it will withstand the test of time. So I, I think that would be like creative prosperity for me. So. Nice, nice. All right. Thanks, man. You've heard it here first. Oh, let me zoom in right there. Okay, yeah, you heard it here first. Carlo, uh, thank you, man. And you might have seen him shopping in the background when I was talking to Brandon. I did already. Yeah, if you were wondering. He was trying on the jackets. But Got he copped some shoes. He copped some shoes. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Epica has the Adidas now. Right, right there. there. Yeah, wait, wait. Yeah. Adidas. And the vintage Adidas. And shout out to Function. Hey, cool man. <laughs> yeah, let's play it. <laughs> All right, what's it? Ooh, ooh. Oh, there we go. Fires maybe up. Yeah. Hey, this looks like the one Grandmaster Flash had. You're gonna need a, the converter for the big mouth. Or big hole. I don't have one right here. Oh. Uh oh. Oh. Oh man. I, mean, I wouldn't open that little package. Because hmm? he had one in that little package of pictures, but yeah. you don't want you wanna open it? Yeah, I mean, I'll open everything. Let's so. get. Did I have a converter in here? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Man, what's going on over there? Wow. Wait up here. Body or 18? 18. 18. Mm. Yes. Hey, we, we might be able to hear your camera click. <laughs> That'd be funny. Oh, during the pictures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be rare. <laughs> yeah, sure, huh?